Hey, welcome to uh, another in uh, an extensive series of uh, Fortune Admissions uh, video blogs. Um, uh, my name is Matt Simmons. I have the, the great fortune of working with, uh, with a dream team of former admissions directors, admissions officers from pretty much every one of the, the world's uh, top business schools. We have a team of uh, close to 35 uh, expert coaches. Um, and today I'm fortunate to be with uh, Brittany Michelle, one of our most uh, experienced and successful coaches who was a former admissions officer uh, at the Wharton School in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, Brittany, how are you today? I'm good, Matt. How are you? Good. Well, of course, uh, during your time at Wharton, um, the, the school uh, reaches that point. You've, you've read hundreds uh, of resumes, thousands of letters of recommendation, and start uh, in the admissions committee to make a few decisions about those candidates that you want to follow up with uh, and meet for interview. Uh, in the last, what, three, four years, uh, certainly Wharton spent a lot of time and energy and resource on developing uh, a different approach to the interview. This is not one-to-one -one with an admissions officer like Harvard or uh, with an alum from, from Stanford, and, and Wharton has developed what they describe as the team-based uh, discussion, and, and they clearly like it, you know, here four or five years later, uh, and it's uh, an integral part of the, uh, the assessment. So um, perhaps you can just talk us a little bit through, through the format of, of the team-based discussion that both Wharton and Michigan Ross uh, use at this next stage of the admissions process. Yeah, so, you know, I can speak pretty specifically to the format um, at Penn uh, for the team-based discussion. And, you know, they typically are getting people together, you know, four or five, six people sometimes together, you know, in a room, um, there's typically an ad come there, an admissions fellow to sort of, you know, intro the process. Um, applicants have been given information on the process, you know, when they've been invited to interview. Um, and they also have been given a prompt that will sort of drive the conversation. Um, in recent years, you know, the prompt has typically been around the creation of a GMC or a global modular course. And so applicants are asked to sort of come up with a one minute pitch, um, just you know, their own idea for one of these courses. Obviously, applicants are encouraged to research what these courses are if they don't know what they are already, um, you know, prior to applying uh, and then creating this pitch. So that's sort of the base format. You know, you go in, you have this group, um, they, you know, sort of say, this is what we're going to be doing. Here's the timing of it, 30 minutes. Um, and then applicants are asked to, you know, each give a one minute, you know, pitch and intro. And people do this, people do this quite differently, I think. Um, and then at that point, you know, the timing really has started and it's up to the group to, you know, move forward with their, intros, discussion, and presentation. Right, so, so, if, if, so we start with the GMC and this sort of global module. Um, presumably there's no one right answer. Um, so, so what do you think that, that Wharton is, is looking for uh, in the sort of ideas that you share? And, and, and then of course, how you share those ideas? Yeah, I think how is probably the more important thing to think about when preparing um, for the team-based discussion. You know, it's great if you have a really interesting idea. Um, you know, I like to see that individuals' ideas touch on, you know, a past experience that they've had, you know, perhaps something that's been uh, meaningful or impactful or perhaps like an area, an ex of, area, an area of expertise that they have, um, you know, that they might want to touch on or really discuss with the group. Um, I do think it's important that, you know, in that one minute pitch that you're not only pitching your idea, but maybe giving a little bit of your own background to sort of set the context for the idea. Um, you never know who's going to be in the room with you. You could have five bankers, you could have two teachers, you could have, you know, really any mix um, of people. So I think, you know, providing that little bit of context, just this is who I am, this is my idea and why I've, you know, decided on this idea. Um, and then, you know, being really just straightforward, clear, concise in that initial pitch and, and sticking to the timeline too. I think it's a really bad idea <laughs> to start um, this process by ignoring the rules. And so that's something that I always remind candidates to try to you know, stick to. Right, presumably they, they, they all want to shine and share great ideas, but if that spills into two, three, four minutes, and, and actually taking time away from other candidates as well. It, it doesn't send a good signal, right? 
Yeah, no, not at all. I think that one of the goals of the team-based discussion um, is to see how individuals interact with each other. It's not to, you know, often candidates will ask, um, does it matter if my idea is picked? That's a big question that we get often. Um, and I don't really think that it does matter if your idea is picked. I think what matters is how you interact with your group um, and that you're really, you know, facilitating the group's discussion and that you're facilitating, um, you know, the sort of development of the end goal. And the end goal is that this group of people that have never met before have varied interests, backgrounds, experiences, um, have to come up with an idea together and you have a very short amount of time to do it. Um, and you need to take lots of different things into consideration while doing so. Um, you know, the details are great. It's great to be able to, you know, highlight your unique experiences and, you know, the value you have you know, to bring to the school, to bring to the class. Um, but it's really how you interact with the people that are in that room with you that you're being evaluated on. So you want to, you know, facilitate the conversation, move the conversation forward. You don't want to speak over people. You want to, uh, for example, if there's someone in the room who's maybe not speaking up, you want to uh, encourage them to, you know, contribute to the group. Try to, without calling them out for not speaking up, um, more naturally bring them into the, into the conversation. Um, one way to do that is by, you know, saying something as simple as, you know, hey, John, so what do you think about that idea? Uh, so really trying to, you know, be conscious about how you're interacting with people and it's a, it's a balance. So you want to be heard, you want to be someone that they're, you know, taking notes on and saying, okay, this person has, you know, really strong presence, but you don't want to be overbearing either. You don't want to have too strong of a presence because that is the negative. <laughs> Right, so find, finding that sort of balance. I mean, uh, Wharton is, is you know, typical of schools with uh, any number of uh, super smart, uh, you know, fast track professional performance and, and, and the rest. But they, they've really put a lot of um, time and thought into uh, the team based discussion. So, do you think it sort of mirrors what they're then uh, looking to create uh, on campus? You know, you, you um, worked at, at Wharton and know the sort of the dynamic of the school. So, so is this you know, a, a real sort of reflection of the sort of interaction, collaborative style, listening skills uh, that are so important uh, to the school in their assessment? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a direct reflection of you know, what type of class they're trying to create. Um, almost everyone that applies to, to Warren's a high achiever. Um, mm -hmm. So you really don't need to worry about uh, you know, rapid career progression, um, you know, great quantitative skills, amazing resume, really interesting extracurriculars, things like that. Um, but they want to bring together a group of people that are going to, you know, sort of add value, but also be able to work together to learn from each other. Um, you can't, you know, have a classroom, I think, that really engages in like true learning if it's a bunch of people that don't know how to work together. Uh, so people that know how to lead, but people that also know how to follow. Um, you have to be able to take on that follower role. You can't be leading, you know, every single case, every single conversation, every single everything. And so if you're displaying traits in the team-based discussion that, you know, um, are, are negative in that way, you know, they might not think of you as someone that's really going to, you know, eventually come to the Wharton classroom and, you know, bring the type of um, sort of team orientation that they're looking for. Right. Great. So, um, well, uh, with, with Judith, Michelle, and other Fortuna colleagues, we, we organize um, uh, regular team-based discussion sessions for, for those that were lucky enough to, uh, to get the interview to really put them uh, through their paces. So if you're watching uh, this video and uh, have a, an invite from Wharton or from Michigan Ross for, for TBD, uh, do get in touch with us because um, it can really make uh, the difference to, to walk into that room well prepared with the sort of advice and, and feedback that, uh, that, that Brittany and, and Judith will share. Um, thanks for, for checking out uh, this, this video. There, there are a growing number of the videos that literally cover the A to Z of uh, top businesses. Uh, thanks to you Brittany for um, joining us for this uh, video blog today.